Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In his essay, The Social Responsibility of Business is to Increase Its Profits, Milton Friedman argues that whenever executives or managers of a company or corporation, this would also extend perhaps to some institutions as well, engage in what he calls um, actions or policies devoted primarily to social responsibility rather than to the objective of maximizing profits for their stockholders or owners. He also includes some other stakeholders that could be affected, such as customers and employees. Whenever a, a business is doing that and whenever a manager is deciding on that course, something is going wrong. And what's really going wrong, according to Friedman, is that the business person, the executive, is unfairly imposing taxes on primarily the owners, but also the employees and customers. That is, they're taking money out of their pockets. And why is this wrong? What is the problem with this? Well, Friedman actually talks about two main things, and they both fall under this heading, he says, of political questions, right? He says that this person is imposing taxes and deciding how the tax proceeds shall be spent. So he says this raises political questions on two levels, those of principle and those of consequence. We can also talk about a sort of appeal to expediency, which is going to fall under principle, but is worth talking about for its own sake. So let's talk about the issues of principle first. He says, on the level of political principle, imposition of taxes and expenditure of tax proceeds are governmental functions. So what makes a tax in a legitimate sense, the government collects it. The government decides what things are going to have to be you know, paid and who's going to have to pay it and at what time, all of those sorts of things. So if a, an executive is imposing some sort of policy or, or rules or whatever you want to call it, some sort of norms upon the company that they're running, uh, for the profit of, of, of the shareholders, they're in effect uh, usurping a government function. Friedman goes on and he says that we've established, and he's talking about liberal democratic states, elaborate constitutional, parliamentary, and judicial provisions to control these functions to ensure that taxes are imposed in, in, so far as possible in accordance with the preferences and desires of the public or the people. So it's not just that government gets to decide whatever it wants to do. Taxes are supposed to be something that is ultimately coming from the, the basis of, of the government, which is the people or the public. So he, said, he reminds us that taxation without representation was one of the battle cries of the American Republic. And he goes on and says, here's what happens then. Um, the business person, self-selected or appointed directly or indirectly by stockholders, becomes then legislator, executive, and jurist. How? He is to decide whom to tax, by how much, and for what purpose, and he is to spend the proceeds, all of this guided by general exhortations from on high to do things like restrain inflation, improve the environment, fight poverty, and so on. And why, why is this a real problem? Well, because, as he goes on, he says, the reason why stockholders or whoever is standing in, 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 in locus for them select that particular corporate executive is because that executive is supposed to be an agent uh, 
serving their principal. The principal is the people who are benefiting from it, and they have this, this manager or executive in charge to run the business, to run the business in order to benefit them. The agent is supposed to be taking their wishes and desires into consideration, and instead, what is the agent doing? He says, this justification disappears when the corporate executive imposes taxes and spends the proceeds for social purposes, he becomes a public servant. He becomes a uh, public employee, a civil servant, even though he remains a name and employee of a private enterprise. So Friedman says that this is intolerable. Um, you know, we shouldn't be selecting civil servants in this way. If they are going to be civil servants, they must be elected through a political process. So what he's saying here, essentially, is we've got governmental functions over here, and then we've got business over here, and we're not supposed to be blending or confusing the two. That winds up being a, a matter of, of principle. What about consequences? Here, he's talking more about how this would actually work. Let's say that you get past the problem of principle and you say, I don't have an issue with that. Can we pull this off? This is where it gets even more interesting. He says, on the grounds of consequences, can the corporate executive discharge his alleged social responsibilities? Is this even feasible? He says, on the one hand, suppose he could get away with spending the stockholders or customers or employees money how is he to know how to spend it? So he uses the example of inflation. Big problem uh, around the time that, that Friedman was writing this, you know, it's published in 1970, uh, becomes a major issue throughout the rest of the 70s, but they were worried about it in the 60s as well. There were injunctions coming down from on high saying, listen, uh, businesses, don't raise your prices because when you do, I understand it's good for your business, but it's bringing the cost up for everybody else and it's, it's causing this risk of higher and higher inflation, which is going to affect consumers. We don't want that to happen. So please, could you like think about this before you raise the, the price of your candy bar from 22 cents to 23 cents or you know the price of gas or the price of bread, whatever it happens to be. Just think about, think about the big picture. And Friedman says, okay, so let's say a business executive is, is, is looking at this and they're like, yeah, okay, I, I can decide not to raise prices this, this term. Is that the best way to fight inflation? <clears throat> or should he be trying to bring costs down somewhere else? Um, so he says, um, how do we spend our, our money? How do we know how to do it? How is the executive to know <clears throat> what action of his will contribute to the end that we want? Presumably, he is an expert in something, running the company in producing a product, selling it, financing it. Nothing about his selection makes him an expert on inflation. Will holding down the price reduce inflationary pressure? Or by leaving more spending power in the hands of his customers, will it simply divert it elsewhere? There could be unforeseen consequences, as we say. So the executive, although they are an expert in one field, they're not an expert in the field that really matters as far as social responsibility. We could say this about any social responsibility cause. The other question that comes up is, well, how much cost is justified? If we're going to impose costs on people, which amount to taxes, he says, who are we going to impose it on? How much cost is he justified in imposing on stockholders, customers, and employees for this social purpose? What is his appropriate share? What is the appropriate share of others? These are hard questions to answer. And Friedman isn't saying that they're impossible to answer, but he is saying you really need to think about this if you're going to try to pull this off. He also brings up a very nuts and bolts question as well. Won't the executive get canned for taking this position? If the executive wants to help out this you know, local town and the, the, say the factory is based in uh, and their large S goes too far, like the sort of things we often see at the end of movies, right? When the, the mean manager has his heart melted and decides he's gonna fix everything, well, he'll just get fired. And he'll be replaced by somebody else who won't make those sorts of what Friedman would consider mistakes. He says, 
Can he get away with spending his stockholders, customers, or employees' money? Won't they fire him for that? His customers and employees can desert him for other producers and employers less scrupulous in exercising their social responsibilities. There is a third thing that he brings up. Again, he, he places this under principle, but I think it's worth talking about in its own uh, respect, and that is a matter of expediency, not the word that he uses, but that's the classical term for these sorts of considerations. One might make an argument that businesses are, to use our contemporary term, much more agile than government in solving pressing problems. And we do, in fact, see all sorts of examples of this coming up in our everyday life. Perhaps there were less of this uh, in Friedman's time, but, but now this is a very pressing issue. So the idea is business is quicker to deal with pressing problems. So we should allow businesses to deal with those problems. This is, in, in fact, one of the arguments that often gets made for a different thing, privatization. You know, Government doesn't do a good job in running the sewers or you know, teaching kids or you know, running prisons. Let's turn it over to a private corporation. They'll be much better at doing that sort of thing. And Friedman says this is a, a, a real problem. Why? He says that I share Adam Smith's skepticism of the benefits that can be expected for those who are affected to trade, those who affected to trade for the public good. He says, we have to reject this argument on the grounds of principle. Why? Because what it amounts to, he says, is um, saying that those who favor the taxes and expenditures had failed to persuade a majority of their fellow citizens and they're seeking to attain by undemocratic procedures what they cannot attain by democratic procedures. So if they really wanted the problem to be solved by government, which is the, you know, group or, or institution that should be solving it uh, by raising taxes, then they should try to convince the, the people and gain control of the legislature, the executive, the judicial branch. Um, now, this is quite difficult, of course, uh, but Friedman doesn't, doesn't take account of that because he's just trying to say it's illegitimate for businesses to step in to do the things that, that government is taking too much time to do or to even to decide to do. So these are all aspects of this, what he calls political question that gets posed when uh, social responsibility becomes the directing orientation of a business and its executives.